Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're going to keep rolling here. We've got a busy day. we got Kyle Bush joining us now. Kyle jo uh, drives the number 18 M&M's Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Kyle comes in ninth in points. I'm going to uh, work to rebound <clears throat> off of Chicago land. So he's got four wins on the season. And Kyle, talk about uh, coming in here now. Uh, um, tough, tough opener, I'm sure, for you at Chicago land. But coming in now to New Hampshire, I'm sure you want to try to, to uh, make up some ground. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. You know, this isn't uh, quite the place we always look to try to turn things around, but uh, we need to. So uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, certainly this is a place where uh, track position means everything. Just, uh, you know, difficult to pass, hard to pass sometimes. You know, you can get some ground on guys and really push your car to the limits, and we kind of found that out here in the spring that uh, pushing it too hard will, will bite you. You know, we blew a bead and overheated the front brakes just using too, using too much and um, pushing too hard. So... You know, it's, you definitely have got to be uh, conscious of, of all of that and, and where you're at in traffic. Kind of let the race play to you. Um, there's definitely a lot of strategy here, the spring race. You know, a lot of two tires, a lot of no tires. Um, sometimes guys staying out. So, um, you know, you can be all over the board. Okay, we'll take some questions for Kyle. We'll start here with Ed. Go ahead. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Kyle, how significant is it this early that, of the two top seeds, uh, Kevin was able to hang up there at the top, and you fell so far. And how hard is that for your team just working day to day? What was the first part of the question? How significant is it that Kevin was able to hang up at the top <clears throat> um, and you fell so far? Yeah, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know if it's significant yet or not. You know, it's a long chase. There's still nine more races to go. We won't know till the end. But um, there's been periods of times in this year where, we come into the race, the points leader have a bad week and fall back to fifth in points, you know, 20-something points behind the leader. And, um, you know, in three or four races, we make it back up. So uh, it depends. You know, certainly there's the opportunity for us to make it back up. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we want to do. Uh, starting here at Loudoun and then going to Dover, a good place for us, you know, and so, certainly some others. So, um, you know, we, we know it's definitely going to be a tough chase. And, um, you know, poor finishes definitely make it a lot tougher. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Hawker, SingDaily.com. I mean, are you, do you feel like you're already at the point where you need to take chances and gamble possibly at the end of races to, uh, to make up those points, or do you feel like right now you just you play it no matter, not considering kind of where, what your point status is? Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, we're going to play it out as we have all year. You know, we're just going out. We haven't changed anything. You know, we're just going out there to do the best we can, to run the hardest we can. Uh, the smartest we can and, and let the results take care of themselves. You know, if we finish enough times in the top five or in the top ten or win a couple, you know, the results will take care of themselves. So for us, we're not pressured. Um, you know, uh, we're, um, we're 20 points back, whatever it is, but there's another guy that's right in front of us that's the same amount back. So, um, you know, we just got to know that uh, there's still nine more weeks. There's still a lot more miles left in racing. And, um you know, wherever it falls, we'll let the good Lord tell us where it's at. Go ahead, Melinda. Hey, Kyle. Melinda Adams, ESPN. Can you sort of talk about the fuel mileage strategy and how you think fuel mileage will play into the chase? Well, your strategy is to get better fuel mileage than anybody else out there. So uh, how you do that, couldn't tell you. Um, certainly, <laughs> you know, there, there's other guys that uh, get better mileage than us, but we get better mileage than others. So... Um, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, here at Loudon, it can always be that kind of way. It kind of depends. Uh, you know, if there's a caution, um, you know, lap 200, you can't stretch it from there. If there's a caution at 225, guys might try to stretch it from there. If there's a caution at 250, it's easy for everybody. It's just a matter of what your, what your strategy's been all day, where you've been on, on pit roads, and, and what kind of tires you've been taking, whether it's been two, whether it's been four. So um, it, it, it it doesn't necessarily just play into fuel strategy. It plays into tires and everything. Let's go, Bob, and then back to Mike. I'm Bob Parker, Scene Daily. Did the damage from hitting the debris last week, I mean, how much impact did that have on your car? And does that impact your fuel mileage at all? I mean, make the car run hotter or anything like that? I mean, uh, it, it did have a little bit of an effect on the car. It made the car looser uh, towards the end of the race. So the last run of the race, we were looser. Um, we did calculate that 
me being looser, we had slower lap times. So we did calculate the slower lap times uh, and taking in consideration with that, um, you know, throughout the run on how much to save exactly. And, um, you know, certainly the damage could have caused more drag to the car and, um, you know, essentially gave us a false read and kind of tricked us. So we, um, you know, we ended up running out. But, um, you know, we just maybe we weren't conservative enough on our numbers or uh, maybe it was the damage to the car. Um, we're not exactly sure, but, um, you know, fact of the matter is we ran out. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Embry, speed.com. Kyle, what, what would be the impact if there's no practice here this weekend? Does anybody in particular benefit from that, you think? Uh, I think the guys that ran really good here the last time probably benefit a little bit more, you know, just unload with the same thing. But, um, you know, we went and, and did a test that uh, we'd like to be able to back up some of those results here this weekend and see if we can't learn something, get a little bit better than uh, than what we've been here in the past. So um, I, we will not race without practice. I know that for a fact. Uh, we've never done that. So we'll, we'll get on the track, whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, they'd like to at least get all the cars on the racetrack for some sort of laps uh, before we go into a race. Go ahead, Reed. Uh, Reed Spencer, Sporting News. Kyle, did, uh, as far as the debris went, did you ever figure out what that was and where it came from? I have no idea. It was heavy. I have no idea. It, um, you know, it's too hard to tell going 200 miles an hour exactly what it is. But, uh, you know, it, it looked like a crushed panel, but it was definitely not a crushed panel because it was way heavier than that. So uh, I couldn't tell you. Um, if it's in the, the, the debris truck, the pickup truck, <laughs> They'll be able to tell you. I couldn't tell you. Other questions? Mike? Hey, Kyle. I know that uh, last last week was kind of a small sample in terms of, you know, performances at a mile and a half, but it's still a key component, you know, in this chase. And how does the complexion of the chase change by coming here second as opposed to first, you know, because potentially it has been a landmine for a lot of people, yourself included. I don't really understand what we're talking about. You used to talking about mile and a half, so now you're talking about here. This has traditionally been the, the first race in the chase, and yep. to come here second, how does that change the complexion when you go to a mile and a half, which is a bigger component of the chase? Okay. Um, you know, it, it doesn't change a whole lot. You know, there's 10 races in the chase. You, don't, you know those 10 races going in, so it doesn't change much. Um, Certainly with Chicago being first and being a mile and a half, there's four or five other tracks like that in the chase. Um, I don't think it gives you a great indication on um, the rest of the season, but uh, if it does, good for us. You know, we ran really good. You know, we were running third, fourth, and then had uh, some issues on pit road, would fall back to 15th, 16th, make our way all the way back up to 7th. You know, we could pass. We, we could move up through the field, so that was good. Um, you know, there was other guys that finished well in front of us that, um, you know, maybe ran 10th to 15th all day, but um, got a got a good finish at the end. So, um, Loudon, it's just uh, it's the second race of the chase. It's just uh, it's a place that uh, has been tricky for some, and mostly because of the track position fight. You know, you battle that all day long, and um, you know, like at a place like. Um, Chicago, you know, you can move around the racetrack and get some different grooves going and try to pass people here. You know, you have one, one and a half lanes that, that you can race in, and, and when you have to pass somebody, you got to move them out of the way. So, uh, or slide job them or push them up into the third lane or something like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's a lot harder to make moves here than, than uh, other places. Let's go, Bob, and then we'll go to Mike. Do you, how do you feel like the mood is of your team after last week? I mean, did you, do you feel like you need to rally them at all? Did you guys do anything this week that maybe kind of pick everybody up after kind of a disappointing week or finish to the race on Monday? Yeah, certainly it was a disappointing finish. And, um, you know, guys were upset. You know, certainly it's not indicative of how we ran. But, uh, you know, we went back to the shop and we just tried to, to work on everything that, that caused us problems, you know, um, and being able to fix those things and, and get ready for this weekend Put it all behind us, you know. Um, guys have done a nice job. We worked on some um, some refueling procedures and some other stuff just to, um, you know, kind of bide our time, I guess, through the week. But uh, other than that, you know, just uh, ready to get back at it. And um, with the test that we had at, at Milwaukee, hoping that uh, those results 
can translate here. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Muller, MikeMuller.net. Our gas mileage race is good for the sport. I know it's sort of like if you have one or two a year, that's the way things go, and it's the way things play out. But we've had a lot of gas mileage finishes, and it's pretty boring to sit around and wait to see who's going to run out of gas, who's going to run out of gas. There is a drama to that, but is that really good for the sport, for the average fan? I mean, is there something we can do about it? Um, I don't know. You know, we don't uh, – these cars are – they're not easier to drive. They're just harder to spin out. Uh, you know, the old cars were a lot easier to, to spin out sometimes or uh, get underneath the back of somebody and, and jack them up. You know, these cars, the bumpers line up. So uh, unless you want to see more debris cautions at the end of races, then really there's no way to fix it. So, um, you know, it is what it is. There's, it's just a product of what you got. It's a product of racing sometimes, you know. You go to local short tracks and, um, you know, they can run 125 lap or green the whole way, you know, and, and people say, oh, well, that was a boring race just because there was no wrecks, you know. Well, what do you want to see? You want to see wrecking or do you want to see racing? Anything else? One more, Ed. We'll finish with Ed. Just a quick follow-up on that. Would it help to go back to the 22-gallon fuel cell? Um. I don't know. You know, certainly Goodyear's gotten a lot better with the tire, to, that what it takes to run on this car. I think that was our, our concern um, in the beginning was that these tires wouldn't go enough laps. Um, some places they will, some places they won't still. So kind of depends. But, you know, I, I don't know that 22 gallons is going to make much different over 17. Um, you know, to me, it's, it's a lot more interesting because actually you do get to pit road more times and, um, you know, you get to, to benefit off your pit crew a little bit more. So when those guys are on their game, you know, you're looking forward to coming down and, and utilizing their skills and, um, you know, being able to have fun with it, of course. And, and um, you know, otherwise you'd just be out on the racetrack uh, running more laps. Kyle, thanks a lot and good luck this no weekend. Thanks.